Hi, Toby. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, all the way from Missouri. Missouri, yeah. Right in the middle of the United States. Wow, yeah. that is so cool. Why don't yeah. we um, start off by you just letting me know just a little bit about yourself and uh, what you do to fill in your time, and then we'll get cracking. Okay, great. Well, my name is Toby Dore, and this past year I finished my memoir, and now I am navigating the very complex and slow-moving publishing world. So, you know, there, I have an agent, but goodness, it takes a lot of time to get a book out there. So, in the yeah. meantime, my husband and I started. And we created this uh, book series called the Unleashed Series, and it's different books for women. It's workbooks and programs to try to help women, you know, heal their lives, heal themselves in some way, and and move on and be productive members of society. So yeah. that's what I'm spending all my time on right now. Well, and I, I imagine that in today's climate, mm -hmm. um, that that particular series of books is really, really timely. I think it is. I think it is. This is a perfect time. And in fact, I came up with the idea for right now we have five books. We have one book finished and five on the drawing board. But yesterday I decided we needed to create a book about resilience. So mm -hmm. that's what we're working on now. Fantastic. And that's all part of the Unleashed series as well? Yes, or this it piece is. Of uh -huh. It's part of the Unleashed series. Yeah. Wow. You know, and, and I guess in times like this, when you talk about resilience, you can either, you know, I, I spoke about in one of my other videos, you know, you have four different responses that happen with your nervous system, right? You can fight this or you can run away scared or you can just freeze and, and not do anything. Mm -hmm. You know, what is it? There's fear, there's flight, fright, and, and freeze. And there's taking action, I think. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. yeah. You know, and, and taking action is what exactly what you're doing right now, right? You've really started to get into this creative space where you're like, this is this is really important. We can actually yes. do this, and this is really going yes. to help. Mm -hmm. you know? That's right. And you know, I was so surprised because I thought I was all calm and cool and collected. And yesterday, we went to the grocery store, and when I turned the corner and went into the bread aisle, there was no bread on the shelves. Yeah. And yeah. it stunned me, and I was shocked that it affected me because I realized. Never in my life have I seen an empty shelf in a grocery store. Yeah. And I know that my parents and my grandparents experienced that, but we could never relate to it. Yeah. And so it took me a little bit of time to kind of realize that it was affecting me, even though I thought I wasn't affected. Mm -hmm. But I really believe, you know, something good's going to come out of this. Maybe we're going to start being a little less... Um, insistent on instant gratification and a little more appreciative of the things that we do have. And I think we're going to see people, you know, helping each other a lot more. So we have a neighbor next door who lives alone. She's an in her 80s, a woman. And we went to the store yesterday for her and got her some things because, you know, she just needs to stay inside. It's too dangerous. If I get the coronavirus, you know, I'll probably get right over it. But if she gets it, that might not be the case. So yeah. I think we're going to see a lot of people, you know, reaching out to others more. Yeah. And I think, you know, when, when we're being challenged and when we're in really trying challenging times, right, you, you are going to be, you are going to see people who are going to want to step out there and who are going to want to put others needs first, you know, like what you were just saying with your neighbor. And my question is, and I'm not sure if there's an answer for it, is <laughs> how then when all this blows over, do we not go back to the way that we were, but we keep on the path that we're headed to? That's a good question. And I, I kind of hope that as we reach out to neighbors and other people in our community who have needs, mm -hmm. that maybe we'll develop relationships with these people. And so we'll naturally continue checking in on them even after this is over because we've kind of created this bond. Yeah, because I think I've seen it quite a few times, you know, like um, at least here in New Zealand, what, what happens is, is, you know, um, we might have an earthquake, for example. Mm -hmm. And at the time that it happens, everyone's in shock and disbelief and horror and everyone jumps into action or runs and hides or, you know, we're out there and we're helping people. And then 
it blows away. It blows, you know. Yeah. And then, and then it stops. And then where is that sense of community? You know, we just we, we go right back to whatever we were doing before. That's true. And I think there's always a risk of that. I feel that maybe this thing, though, is not going to be over in a flash. I think we might be looking at months of changes in our lifestyle. And so maybe that's a long enough time to develop a habit. And exactly. when you react to a natural disaster, it's kind of like that instant you do something and then things go back to normal pretty quick. So maybe that'll be the difference. I don't know. Yeah. And I think I take hope from that because, I mean, I have this, this, this great dream that all of this has happened for a really awesome reason, like what you were saying, you know, and that maybe we are going to step into a higher vibration. Maybe we're going to step into, you know, the way that we should be where we stop prioritizing money and um, greed and I'm better than you and I've got more than you, you know, all this materialistic thing and actually start to stay talk of, take stock of our environment and the effects that we're doing to it. I know. think, so. and I think one of the important things is to realize that even though we feel like we can see good coming out of this and that we can see a light at the end of the tunnel, that you're going to have those moments where you turn a corner and go into an empty bread aisle and kind of have a little meltdown. And that's okay. You just need to move on from it though. You know, you can't pretend like it didn't bother you. Maybe you just need to talk about how it bothered you. And then you can move on from it a little bit better. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, there's a lot of people who may not have anybody to talk to, or there's people who may not be used to talking about their feelings and their emotions, yeah. you know, and I'm, that's what I'm hoping with, with the series of videos that we're all creating is that through us talking, we're, you know, standing up there and we're going, Hey, we got a big fright when there was no bread yeah you know? well there was there were no cars on the road and i got it, normally it takes me an hour and a half to get there in the morning and i took mm -hmm. 15 minutes you know yeah. and you it does hit home because it's not familiar it's not our comfort zone while we hate traffic it's our comfort zone and that's and right I, you know we don't have it now yeah i mean it, it's obvious to you when you go out and something's changed like the traffic that you know, this is a big thing. This is bigger than just what you hear on the news. It really is here. Mm -hmm. So I think you just have to acknowledge those feelings and not pretend like they don't, it doesn't bother you because yeah. you don't get ahead that way. And hopefully with your videos, you know, people will be able to comment on them. Mm -hmm. And I would hope that those of us who are recording the videos will respond to those people through, you know, through their comments. And so mm -hmm. maybe we can offer people a way to have a discussion that like that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I think it's, it is all about connecting, right? We've, yes. we've got, um, I saw this really funny post yesterday. Well, I, I thought it was funny. It appealed to my sense of humor where, you know, it said um, something to the effect of, you know, what the Olympics would look like, uh, the next future Olympics, you know, how you've normally got the five interlinked Yes. Um, circles. And then now they were just, they were individual circles. Yes. I cracked uh -huh. up because I just went, you know, yes, this is satire. I get that. But it's also part of, um, you know, our social distancing and keep, yes. you know, one meter away from everybody. And, you yeah. know, we're, we're almost in a way while we're trying to help, we're actually almost fostering disconnect and we're yes. fostering separation and we're fostering mm -hmm. isolation, you know. But, you know, I think it's beautiful that in the moment that this is happening to us, we have social media. Can you imagine 20 years ago if this had happened and mm. we didn't have the internet and, <clears throat> and people would really feel cut off? So I feel like the internet and social media is a tool that we can use right now to stay connected. Yeah. When we can't do it in person. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and it's almost like if people were watching these videos, you know, they see the two of us, you know, yes, we've got different backgrounds, but we could be in the same house, you know, you we could, could, be. could be. The walls you know, are almost the same color. They're almost the same color, <laughs> you know, and, you know, and, it, and somebody else is watching or they've hosted a, a watch party or, or something like that. They've got the two of us just having a conversation, which I just think is amazing. And they're mm -hmm. listening and they're part of the conversation. Mm -hmm. You know, so we're, we're opening up that space for people to talk about it while they're 
feeling maybe separate. And if, if we can do this with a visual way like this and an auditory cue and all that kind of thing, but we're not physically in touch, then we're almost feeling ourselves to think, hey, listen, you know, we're, we've connected across time zones right here. That's right. Uh -huh. Even and day. I think you're on a different day than I am. I am. It's I'm Sunday Saturday morning. Here. Yeah, yeah, it's Saturday here. So like you're in the future. <laughs> ah, hey, today <laughs> happened. It's okay. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll let you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. That's pretty cool. So I just think we have some awesome tools at our disposal. And we also have, you know, books. Amazon's still delivering. So, you know, find something to read that lifts you up or find something to read that gives you ideas of how you can make a difference. There's all kinds of opportunities out there. Just because you're stuck in your house doesn't mean that you can't be part of a community. Exactly. And I think it's about our mindset as well, you know, because you could be like, I'm stuck at home. I'm stuck, mm -hmm. right? Yes. I can't get out. This is my yeah. life now forever. I, I feel imprisoned, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we have to really just take a step back and go, but are you? You know, let's, yes. let's really ask ourselves, how bad is staying at home? Mm -hmm. you, know, you could say yes, but it's like home detention. Right? It's it's not. You're mm -hmm. still allowed to step outside into your garden and That's you're right. still free. You know, you still have right. that ability and to make. I found that it's a great opportunity for me to focus and get a lot of work done mm -hmm. because it's so easy to get distracted by having to go here or go there. And now you think twice about going out. And so we, I've got a lot of work to do. So yeah. that's what I'm focusing on. And they say that a lot of creativity comes out of times like these. I, I can believe it because you do a lot of introspection and you do a lot of, you know, what ifs. And so I think that sets you on a creative path. Yeah. And who knows what comes out of it, right? That's exactly right. I mean, I have a new book that came out of it yesterday. So now I'm going to get busy on that book. Amazing. Resilience, The Art of Bouncing Back. I love that. I yeah. have this image of, um, I was talking about it in a video where um, you know, you've got a bouncy ball and as it hits the ground, it uh -huh. compresses and then it bounces yes. back out. Yes. You know, at uh, the moment, we're, we're feeling compressed. Mm -hmm. That's you know? right. And you know, in each one of my books, I use a different insect in the title. So this one is Grasshoppers Unleashed, The Art of Bouncing Back. So, uh -huh. you know, I think, I think it's going to be fun. Yeah. And so how do, how, What's, what's the idea? So if, if anyone was actually listening to this and they were like, oh, I really like the sound of that. And, um, and who's Toby and how do I find yeah. out about what well, book she's we got? We have a website called theunleashedseries.com. Oh, perfect. So, yeah. yeah. So you can you know, get information there. Yeah. Um, and like I said, you know, this wasn't about plugging, but I think, I think that, you know, at a time where we've got, we do have social media, right? Now, social media does good things but it also does bad things, right? Yes. It, can, it can be really awesome at sharing humor. It can be really awesome at giving us updates as to, you know, what's currently happening in the country, but it can also be really rubbish, you know, in terms of, yes. I, I heard um, this morning that maybe that post that was going around about Venice and the clean canals was actually a hoax. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know, you know, but first, yeah. who would, who would, muck around with something like this right now yeah that's right that's right you, yeah you also have okay. a whole lot of um fear mongering you know and people um going oh my gosh look at all these empty shelves you gotta mm -hmm. hurry go and get your food yes What's everybody doing with all their bread where are they storing all this bread i have no idea it just i mean why would anybody be using more than they would use in a normal day i don't know yeah. But, you know, we have a lot of people on social media here. So in the United States, we have the National Guard, which are, you know, they're military people who have civilian jobs. And when we have a crisis, they call them up. Mm. And so, you know, Facebook saying they're activating the National Guard. We're going to be locked. They're going to have armed guards at the front of our houses, not let them out. It's like, you know what? We activate the National Guard for all kinds of crises. And actually, they're like sanitizing hospitals. So yeah. thank God we've activated the National Guard. You know, it's not a bad yeah. thing. 
but Facebook just goes crazy and it. And so maybe we can fill it with so much positive and good things that all those negative things get pushed down. Yeah, and, and perhaps this is also a good opportunity. I've just written down discernment. I think mm -hmm. that, you know, it's such a, such a wonderful opportunity. If, you know, if, if there's a positive intention for absolutely everything bad that happens or everything that you, you're not enjoying or that feels uncomfortable, if something positive was to come out of this, not only do we have an understanding now of how what, what our fear response is and what our uh, reaction is to our mortality or to our survival, you know, um, we, we're also gaining that, an idea of how resilient we are. Yes. Or not. And, and we're getting ideas as to, okay, well, what do I do in this situation? How can I get through this? Okay, well, that's great, because now you're asking those questions. There's mm -hmm. also the opportunity for discernment. We're, we're getting bombarded. You know, Facebook will be loving this in terms of just how many people are just posting up stuff. Yes. And it's about sifting through it. And stepping back and kind of going a little bit objective about this, going, okay, before I react and respond and comment or freak out or think that, you know, the world is ending, mm -hmm. let me just exercise the sermon and just work out where this is coming from and yes. whether or not it's actually worth me reading this. Yes, mm -hmm. be safe. Yes, be careful. Yes, look after everybody. It's not only about ourselves now, it's about everybody in the human race. But that's not totally shut our walls you know let's not now have this narrow vision on life and the future you know? yeah i agree you know i think maybe people just kind of need to put on a filter and think is this thing i'm going to post lift someone else up and if not it's not worth sharing so yeah, yeah. it's kind of a different frame of mind yeah absolutely so is there anything else um you know, has anything else come up for you in terms of COVID? I mean, you're, you're in the, the situation where you can stay home and you, you're working and you're being really productive. You know, has anything else come up that you're like, oh, this is a struggle? Well, you, no, not really. The real, I think the thing we have to remember is that if we freak out about coronavirus, it's not going to change coronavirus. Mm -hmm. So it's not worth the energy you put into it. So if you can't make a difference, if you're not like some wonderful scientist with some great idea of a vaccine, then, you know, it doesn't do you any good to spend any time worrying about it. You just need yeah. to, you know, find ways to do something productive in the time that you've been given. Because maybe we'll all find that this is a gift of time. Yeah, a time to just slow down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, if, if I look back at my life, I'm in a way kind of uneasy about having all this time because I'm, I've always been somebody who's filled up every last minute of my time because I don't know what to do with free time. But I now have free time and I can spend it with my family. You know, I can spend it doing something like this, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. which is so soul fulfilling. You know, this is amazing to be able to speak to all these people. So I'm, I'm healing from this, you know, and I'm, I'm getting stronger through this and I'm getting resilient through this. So if I am. We all you know, can. Potentially. And, you know, I kind of look at it as at, at the, in the moment when I feel like I have something to complain about related to the coronavirus, then just stop and think, I'm, I'm sure I can easily find someone else who has a more legitimate complaint about it. So, you know, be grateful for what you've got. Mm. Yeah. I remember growing up, my mum, she was the queen of idiomatic expressions. And if she's watching this, she'll be laughing right now. <laughs> but she, um, she would always say, just remember, darling, there is always somebody worse off than yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which I think was to serve to humble me and to stop me from wanting whatever it was that I was wanting yes. at the time as a kid. But mm -hmm. it's so true. I mean, maybe this will curb our insatiable wants because I think as a world even, it's more than just my community or my country. I think as a world, we have these insatiable wants and maybe, maybe it's time to stop and just be grateful for what you've got yeah. and not want. So yeah. maybe that's the lesson that'll come out of this. Mm. 
And so would that be your takeaway message or is there something that you would specifically I think like to finish with? Would, you know, just look around and be grateful for what you've got. If you're sitting in a house and you've got someone, especially if you've got someone sitting there with you, you know, it's a pretty good day, I think. Yeah, I love that. Toby, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to come and speak with me. And um, please do just let people know that you've done this video, just share it, just spread the word. It's, let's get this out there. You know, that's, that's, like I say, you know, together we are strong. We can spread the word. We can get people watching. We can get people wanting to contribute. I've actually had people going, I, I really want to, I really want to share my, my side of things too, which is amazing. You know? I think that's great. Yeah. Yeah. So please, you know, go for it. Let me know. I'll let us it. know. How, yeah. Let us know how your book goes, of course. And if you, if you ever Feel like you have something else that that has come up that you feel like you would want to share just drop me a message and okay and we'll get you back on that sounds great thanks laura okay. thank you so okay. much all right bye bye, bye.